Hi guys, it's Sam for Digital Meat, and um, uh, this is part two of the uh, dynamic uh, parachute tutorial. Now, if you haven't watched the first part, I suggest you go back and watch that because it leaves us uh, with this setup that we've got here. Uh, okay, so where we left off, we got our canopy built and our crate, and we connect up some splines with a sweep and made sure um, they were connected to the canopy and the, the crate and uh, they're dynamic so if we press play you can see that they'll sag down like that but now we need to make uh, the rest of it dynamic so let's have a look this crate is obviously going to need a rigid body tag so we right click on the weight go down to simulation tags go to rigid body we've got one on there now and if we press play we should see the uh, crate stretch away and unfortunately our splines will stretch out into infinity okay so that's what we're kind of expecting um, and our parachute itself which will be under here that needs a soft body tag on it so right click again go down to simulation tag soft body and uh, okay it all starts to fall not much is happening there though in terms of being like a, a real parachute so what can we do to um, uh, have our canopy act almost like cloth really well if we click on the dynamics tag we can um, we can have a look at the uh, the uh, state of it um, on our collisions tab if we look at uh, our shaper it's set to automatic so it'll try and make an automatic shape and I should imagine it will be kind of a dome over the top there and then it'll just be a straight line across the bottom we probably don't want that because if anything's going to go inside it um, it just won't so we probably need to make this a moving mesh first of all and if we go to the mass um, I'm thinking I'm going to do a custom mass because because it's going to be cloth. It's probably going to have quite a low a low mass. It's going to be the air resistance that is going to you know help float our weight down to the to the ground. So I'm just going to put 0.5 in there for now. We can mess around with these settings later if we need to. Right, if we go to the force tab, we've got drag and lift. Lift is going to be the one that we're interested in really so i'm going to put that about 90 percent put the drag at maybe 10. see what we get from that now not a lot has changed there and it's because if we uh, select our parachute and go into our polys and select them all you can see that they've turned orange indicating that the normals are facing outwards if we look underneath it's blue meaning that they're the opposite side of the normal so the reverse side of our normal direction and uh, if we go back to our tag here um, you've got a tick box for two-sided so basically aerodynamics looks at the normal side of a polygon unless you click this and it will look at both sides of it so we check that on. I can deselect all my polys now. Go back to object mode. Right, so hopefully we'll see a little bit of resistance now we've done that. Yes. And as you can see, the mass is floating away from us. In fact, uh, I think I'll stop messing with the canopy here because we're not really going to get a real sense of what's going on until we fix that stretching. And how we're going to do that is how I did uh, dynamic splines in the previous tutorial, which was with springs. So I think what I'm going to do is um, close these up for now, create a null object, um, and I think the null will be fine there. And uh, I'll just name this connectors. Because that's what we're going to have in there. 
and then I'm going to go up to simulate at the top here um, go to dynamics and select my spring and that's going to live inside this null we've made and then I'm just going to copy this spring object a few times uh, we're going to need eight the same amount as uh, the splines we have there we go just whack them all in there Watch me faff, faff around doing this again. It's nice and fun for you. Just want them in order. Okay. So we've got our eight springs in there. If I look at the uh, attributes for our spring, we've got object A and object B. So what's connected to what. And uh, so let's start with spring one. We're going to open up our sweep so we can see where spline one is. So, as you can see here, this is uh, spline one. So if we go down to our springs, this is spring one. We're going to want it here. Right, so um, let's select all our springs because it's going to be the same for all of them in terms of the objects that are going to go in these fields. So, object A. Let's work from the top down. That's the most makes the most sense. So object A is going to be our canopy, which is this going to be this parachute. So we drop that into object A, and that should be the same for all of them. Yeah, it is because they were all selected. And object B is going to be our uh, crate, which we've called weight. So we're going to put that in object B. Okay. Close these up for the time being. Okay, let's start with spring one then. I'm going to leave that open again. So spline one is there, yep. Yeah. Spring one, we're going to want a connector there. So let's deal with the weight end first, which is this one. It's saying that it's attached to the weight and its attachment is at the center of mass. Well, the center of mass of this is probably right in the middle, which we don't want. We want it up here. So for this, we're going to choose an offset, and uh, let's have a look at the side view. This will probably give us a better idea of what we're looking at. Okay, so this line here, this is the zero point. So, as you can see, as I, as I push up the um, Y direction here, it moves up to near enough the top of the box. Now we know this box is, uh, I think it's one meter by one meter. So obviously an offset of 50, we'll put it right at the top here. So let's type 50 in there and go back to our other view. And then we're going to want the uh, Z to be offset. And we're going to want that there, I think. Uh, yeah. So this is our spline one. I'm just going to get rid of that grid because it's a bit distracting. Um, there we go. So go back to our spring, and we're going to offset that uh, to minus fifty. Now that's in the right place there. Uh, so I'm going to need to do that with all the other weight, uh, all the other um, springs, so they match up with each of our splines. And what I might do is grab the rest of them and uh, offset plus 50. So they're all, they're all up there now. So spring two, let's have a look at spline two. Which one's this? So that's this one here. Spring two. We're going to want it this way. So it's minus 50, and then minus 50. I just imagine this one's three, yeah. Uh, no, we don't want to do that. We want to, that's just going to be minus 50. That's good. Spline four is there. 
this is going to want to be this way so that's plus 50 in the Z and minus 50 in the X wonderful next one spring 5 And that's just in the Z there. Next one six. That's going to want to be 50 in the Z and 50 in the X. 50, there we go. Spring seven. Oh, we don't need to touch that. Just needs to be plus 50. <laughs> the X direction there and then our last one needs to be plus 50 and minus 50 in the Z so now they should all be offset so they connect to our crate in the right way right that's good now for the parachute it's not going to be so easy uh, to do an offset so um I'm not going to do an offset. I'm basically going to do it via a point selection. So this is just basically a, a way of showing you another way of how you can connect uh, the springs to our object. So first of all, I'm going to set up our point selection on our canopy. So if I turn off the subdivision, because the uh, what looks like polygons here is actually being generated by the subdivision surface. So, uh, you know, this point here isn't a real point. If I turn that off, you can just see it's a poly. So you can't connect to these imaginary points unless I collapsed it. And we don't want to do that because then our dynamic simulation would take forever. So I'm going to turn this off and we're just going to go to the nearest, the best nearest place we can go. So let's start off by selecting spline one. Okay, that's up here. So let's select our parachute. Go to point mode. And uh, we'll choose our live selection tool. And I, I think probably this point is an acceptable place to choose. It's uh, quite near where we want it to be. So we select our point. Go to select and set selection. Boom. And then we see this tag up here, which is a point selection. And if we ever, you know, if I unselect all our points there and then double click this, it will reselect that selection. So I'm just going to click on this and call this point selection one so it tallies up with everything. Now, if I was to select another point now, say like this one go to select and set selection it won't make a new tag because our first tag is already selected it will actually overwrite this tag so we don't want that to happen so make sure we're not selecting this tag here and then we can make our other selection and it will create a new um, selection tag so if this is point one um, okay so this is spline one here spline two which is this this spline. Okay. Go back to our parachute. Point selection. Now, there's no cut in the middle of this. So, this or this is going to be our choice. Uh, I'm just going to go for this one. It's not going to matter too much. Um, it'll all look pretty good when we're finished. Fingers crossed. So because this is smack bang in the middle, not, neither of these points are nearer than the other. So I'm just going to pick one at random. Got a point selected. Go up to selection. Set selection. We've got another point selection. I'm going to name this one two. Click off. And then we're going to go to uh, spline three. Which I believe is going to be this one. Just going to make sure. Yes, it is. 
point mode. I'll select this point here. All right, just another tip. Um, if I select a point here and I accidentally select one behind, uh, I'm not going to know until I look. But if we go up to options and configure, and then go over to, I believe it's view. No, I'm totally wrong, it's HUD. Then we can say um, total points in the scene or total points of the object you got selected um, and also total edges, total polygons. And then you can have selected points, selected edges and selected polygons. So I'm just going to leave those on. And then as you can see in our corner here, in my object there's 649 points but I've only got one selected so that's how I know I've got only one so I'm going to select that point go up to select set selection and that's three okay I'm going to go over to this corner and again it's kind of a halfway house between these make sure my Tag isn't selected. I'm going to select this point here. Only one selected. Select, set selection, and that's selection four. All right, guys, we're halfway near, nearly there. One, two, three, four, five. Brilliant. Okay, so come off this tag again. This is five. Select, set selection. Point selection five. Again, it's in the middle, so I'm just going to choose that point. Set selection. This one's going to be six. So that's six. We've got this one here, it's going to be seven. So I'm just going to choose that point. Set selection. Seven. And then our last one. Again, it's pretty central. So I'm just going to choose it up. Unselect that. So that's... Uh, so selection eight. So yeah, we've got six, seven, eight. Okay, good. So we've got all our uh, point selection sorted out. We can turn that back on if we wish, and then uh, let's close this up. We don't need it for the time. Okay. So let's select all our springs. Object A is the parachute. Hang on guys, I'm just going to have a drink. Ah, that's better. So object A is the parachute. And at the moment it's at the center of mass. We don't want that. Offset, polygon point or point selection. So we choose point selection. And then it's asking us what is our point selection if we just choose spring one i had everything selected then so we'll choose spring one and then drag point selection one in lovely spring two point selection two three point selection three and i suppose you're getting the idea now six is six Seven, seven, eight, eight. So we've got all our springs done now. You notice they're in the middle, but we'll move forward a frame and um, they'll go to where they need to go. You notice that if I play this now, it kind of folds up on itself, which isn't what we want. And it's because of the uh, the the rest length of our springs. 
So if I select all our springs and go down, you say my rest length's 100 centimeters. Well, we know that the distance between this point and this point is not 100 centimeters. Our box is 100 centimeters, one meter in all directions. So we know that this length here is at least five or I forgot what we made it now, five or six. So these springs compress and, and spring to place. So we can either put a value in here that we think will be good, or we can set the rest length based on what it is now. So if I click set rest length and then press play, we get a much more natural floating down there. Okay, so that's good. Okay. We want this on linear. I was thinking about linear and angular, but I think we're going to be okay with linear. Um, right, so now we've got some other things to consider within our uh, spring. We've got this region of influence here. So, um, object A is our parachute. It's attached via, via a point selection. But what's the region of influence around that point? So we've got it set to 20% at the moment. If I crank this up to 90, it's how much will it affect? You can see that the springs haven't sprung to the points where they're connected because it's affecting a wide range. So it kind of puts itself in the middle of that range. Now if I drop this, rewind first, if I drop this right down to 10, it will only really affect the regions where it's connected. And you get a lot more of a natural result. There. Um, you don't get that option when you offset because it's an absolute. Um, so we don't have to worry about that there. Um, this apply only to A, only to B, to both. We want it set to both. And the rest length is obviously different for every spring. And uh, I think we're done on this tab for the spring. So that's our spring set up. Right, back to the parachute. Let's try and get this looking a bit more. I mean, it's not too bad, but I think we can get it looking a little bit more natural, I think. It's kind of folding in a little bit in weird places and whatnot. In fact, I'd like to slap my springs and see where they're actually connecting to. Yeah, we're getting a little bit of a fold in the middle there. I don't know why. Maybe um, that's to do with our dynamic settings for our cloth. So let's go to the let's go to our um, dynamics tag for our parachute and have a look at the settings for this. Well, we dealt with the force tab already earlier. Now the soft body tag. This is this is going to be the main one. Now let's have a look. What can we do here? Spring structural dampening elastic limit. I'm not really going to mess around with that, I don't think. Um, the shear doesn't tend to do too much. Um, it's almost like how points between springs in the soft body bend. I'm not describing that very well. Um, now Flexion, this is a pretty, pretty big one. If I play it as it is, you can see that it, it does this. Now what happens if I whack the Flexion right up to say 100? It tends to, mm, it tends to be quite rigid. But if I drop this down to say 5, And play it again and so we get a lot more of a sort of like cloth cloth like result it tends to fold over and bend a little bit more and um, that's probably more what we're looking for but obviously we don't want our parachute to cave in on itself um, and that's where uh, these settings come in 
shape conservation. So let's try a stiffness of five. Let's go all out and I think leave everything as it is, probably. It's definitely retained its shape a lot better. We're getting some nice twist in there as well. And I think that's actually quite good. Um, I think we're going to give our weight a custom mass as well. So if we click on the dynamic tab uh, tag for our uh, weight and then go to mass, it's at the moment set to world density, but if I put a custom mass in here, at the moment it's 10. i set this to something like 5 and see what we get. So it's heavier. I quite like that. I think I'm going to leave it there. Let's put a floor in for the time being, just so we can see what's going on. Um, and I'm going to put a simulation tag on this as well, just a collider body. So we've got our chute that can, you know, float through the air as it drops to the ground gracefully. What happens when it gets to the ground? So it's going to fall down and it's going to hit the deck and then the <laughs> dynamic splines don't bend. They would normally, but it's the springs that are holding them up. And the reason for that is in the springs itself. So they hit the deck like that and then they stay there. That is definitely not what we want. So if we go to the springs, we can select all of them and go down to right to the bottom we've got these values electric elastic stretch limit so how far can they be stretched out from their original length so you could turn that on and give it a value here and the same goes for elastic compression limit so if i turn that on and give it a value of a meter uh, and then play and see what happens They're allowed to, well, actually, they're not compressing at all there. So maybe, um, let's make this value smaller then. Yeah, it would be, it would be smaller. So let's make that 50 centimeters. Right, I think it's basically saying you've got to compress 50 centimeters before you reach your compression limit and then you can you can start um, so if I set this to one centimeter it'll hopefully go over that limit and then fall down it is doing it slowly so we could probably actually set this to zero and we can get a real good idea of what's what's going going on there. That's a bit better. Obviously, when we don't have these springs selected, it'll just look, look like this thing's floating down. Beautiful. Obviously, the splines are going through the floor because it hasn't got a um, a uh, hair collider on it. In fact, what I might do is um, I don't think the hair collider tag plays nice with a floor object. So I think I want to put a plane in and get rid of the floor. Let's get the floor back, put the plane under it. Select the plane. Zero out. If you go here and right click on any of these spinners, it's, it sends them back to zero. Get rid of the floor and then we can size our plane up. So let's just call this 2000 by 2000. That'll do this. <clears throat> okay. Oh, I do actually need to put that hair collider on it. So if I go to a plain right click, hair tags, hair collider, put that on and see what's going on. Uh, 
there we go. Get a bit more of a natural result there. Although my spline, so you can actually see the segments in them. So I want to smooth those out a bit. So I'm going to select my spline to go to object. The type's linear and the immediate uh, intermediate points I've got set to adaptive. But because it's linear and the amount of points I've got in there, you can, you can actually see the straight lines there. So I'm going to set this to maybe B spline. And you can see that smooths out the curves of those really, really nicely. So now we got a, a much better, yeah, our splines look a lot more beautiful. Lovely. But obviously, our, let's up the time on this. Let's go back to our parachute and what it looks like. The, the box hit in the floor, the dynamic splines look great but our parachute isn't really deforming in the way that we'd like it to so so we've got a couple of options i think um one of which would be when we can animate the values of the soft body settings here so this stiffness we could put down to zero when it hits the floor. So when the top hits the floor, put the stiffness down to zero and this is more likely to fold in on itself. And also the flexion, I don't know what happens when you put it down to a zero value. I don't know if it will. It's better. It is better than it was before. It's slowing down a bit. That's actually quite good. So I think we could actually probably animate those values. Um, so what did I have before? I had a flexi on a five and a structural of five. And that's easy to remember then. So we can have it come all the way down here. Get to a hundred. Um, that's just after three seconds. And uh, click this little button here, it will record a keyframe for this value. So the flexion is five, the stiffness is five. And um, I think also that the canopy itself falls a little bit too slow. So I think once it's hit the deck there, I'm going to Keep the drag and lift at these values for this frame. And obviously these settings for this frame and then move along one frame. And then I'm going to have the stiffness come down to zero. And I'm going to have the flexion come down to zero. Go back to the force. I'm going to put the drag down to 10. Um, to zero even. I'm just going to do the drag for now. Uh, we're in my frame 101, so I can always get back there if I need to. And let's play this and see what happens. So that comes down nicely like that. Ooh. Oh, that is weird. Shaken up a little bit there. It's not bad though. What I might do is bake the dynamics because then we can get a sense of real time what's actually going on. So if I uh, come to the dynamics tag here and uh, then cache everything. So let's bake the whole simulation there. And then see what kind of result we get. Sorry for the wait, guys. I could cut this out, but I'm not going to. There we go. Come along. Slowing down towards the end. It's because the 
soft body simulation is getting a bit more hectic as uh, it starts to collide with itself and hit the floor, scrunch up. So we're nearly there. Um, chug, chug, chug. There we go, 100. Okay. So here's the deck. It's actually generating quite a bit of lift there, and I don't think it would be like that. I think it would be a little bit more... I think it would be a bit quicker. So what I think I'm going to do is... Frame... 101, I think it was. So let's go back to our tag. Yeah. So we've got a drag of 10, uh, frame 100, and then next frame has got a drag of zero. I'm going to actually change this lift parameter down so the canopy falls a little bit quicker. Now obviously it's going to look exactly the same because I baked the dynamics so that they're baked in. Um, so even though I've keyframed this value here, it's not actually going to make a blind bit of difference. So what I've got to do is go back to my project overall dynamics, clear the cache, and then rebake. And again, this might take a minute, so bear with me. The other option for doing this, and I don't know if it will work, um, is I was thinking of maybe animating the dynamics tag off and animating a cloth um, tag on. So after I bake this, I might I might give that a quick try and uh, see what kind of result we get. But um, that's what cinema is all about. There's there's more than one way to skin a cat, so. You know, there may, may be several different ways that um, we'll do the same thing. One may be better, one may not be. But, you know, you can try that and see what looks better. If they're, if they're both, you know, valid options, that's great. But you may find that on one particular project, one method would be better. And on, a, on another project, the other method may be better. So it's always worth, you know, thinking about several different ways to do something. This is interesting for you, isn't it, guys? Come on, cinema, you can do it. Okay, now let's see if we get a better result from that. It definitely falls quicker. I'm a little bit happier with that. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this. I'm going to just call this Parachute 4. Um, soft. Soft body keys, I'm going to call this one. And save that. That seems good. Uh, and then I'm going to go back to our Dynamics cache and just clear the cache there. And then what I'm going to do is, I think we're going to let it get to this stage again. So that's frame 100. I'm going to select this Dynamics tag, go to Dynamics, and click this button. So it's enabled on frame 100. And then on 101, I'm going to disable it and do that. Um, so all these keyframes that are made on, on drag and lift and um, my soft body settings, they're going to be nullified anyway because I've turned the dynamics tag off. So um, let's have a look at the result we get from that. It should just freeze the uh, thing in midair. Yeah, it does. Okay, so that's good. Okay. 
um, like so. This parachute then, let's go to simulation and add a cloth collider. There may be several reasons this isn't going to work, but um, I'm going to... Oh, we don't need a cloth collider, silly me. Uh, we actually need a cloth tag. So simulations tag, cloth. That's what we need. And if I go to... Do, 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 do. I think it's this tag. Yeah, cloth engine. So let's turn this off. Oh, we can't actually um, make a keyframe for whether it's on or off or not. That is a massive shame. Hmm. Well, at present, I can't see a way of doing that then without being able to turn cloth on and off. Cloth engine, no forces, address of the cache expert. Hmm. Well, on that little bombshell, then I'll probably leave it, leave that alone for the time being. Um, I think, I think what we've got set up in uh. This is uh, this is probably acceptable. And I think as well, because I've baked the dynamics, we can actually scrub backwards and forwards. Ah, we can't. It hasn't baked the spline dynamics. Okay, so maybe if I select all the spline dynamic tags and go to it cache, I can calculate them as well. Now, I have a funny feeling that it's going to have to go for each of one of these tags in order. So it calculates one tag. It will get to the end. And then calculate another tag. Yeah. As I suspected. So it's going to run through all eight of those. That's quite annoying. <clears throat> There's also another little issue that I want to bring up at the end after this is finished and it's about priority um, I should imagine that after you set this up you go yeah that looks really good um, set it up in a scene and uh, get it to render and um, you're gonna notice that the the spline dynamics come away from the um, the other dynamic objects and uh, I'm going to show you a way to fix that pretty much. This is taking its sweet, sweet time. But we're nearly there, peeps. Nearly there. Okay, we should just have a couple more of these calculations to do. We shouldn't put 20 seconds on the clock, really, but hey ho. Yeah. Okay, that's finished now. So, if we play it, we should be able to scrub through. Yeah, and we've got our spline dynamics, which is great because it means that you could convert all these to keys and uh, have it going backwards, getting sucked back up. Okay, so let's have a look at this problem that I was talking about. If I just play it, for a little bit and then pause it on a certain frame and then I go up here everything looks like it's connected and if I render in the in the uh, viewport everything looks fine and dandy there as well yep everything's great now if I go to the picture viewer let's get a nice um, 16 by 9 image I'll just put this down so we can get everything in the frame and render to the right. So everything's connected in the viewport render. And if I um if I do the same thing in the picture viewer, oh, where's it all gone? Zoom out a little bit. You can see that these are disconnected from the uh, from the box. And if I go further up.
these should be not where they're meant to be either they're not on the edge of the canopy they're, they've shot up so you're thinking well, why in one is it okay and when with the picture viewer it's totally different it's all to do with priority so if we select one of these spline tags and goes to its basic tab you've got this priority expression let's right click on priority and look at the help me menu again i can't stress enough how brilliant this help menu is you can right click on anything and find out about it <clears throat> this basically works uh, tells you about how cinema how its priorities work everything's got an order so this is its calculation sequence initial animation so it'll do this calculation first oh excuse me this calculation then animation then expression generators and then onto dynamics and um dynamics are actually generator at 400 hair is actually a generator at one so what's happening is your spline dynamics which are in the hair menu are generator plus one so that calculation happens before the dynamics calculation so it calculates the spline dynamics before it calculates the soft body and the weight and we don't want that um, you're probably thinking what do these values mean if we go up the top here possible priority ranges range from 490 minus 499 to plus 499 and this sits at 400 and this sits at plus one so to what we do is if we select all our splines here and then um, go to generators because if you remember hair is a, is a generator it's actually and uh, our dynamics is set at 400 we can make sure that the spline dynamics happen after our dynamics by making them I don't know 401 so if we play now they look connected in the viewport and render as such and if we render in the picture viewer they're still off and it's because we baked our spline dynamics cache so we go into this and empty it. Hopefully, we'll now get a decent result. And we have, they're not, they're not shooting up past this point anymore. And if we look at our box, they should be connected to it. Perfect. And obviously we could, I don't know, set up some quick lighting or whatnot, but um, this tutorial is not about that. So I'm going to leave that with you. You've now got a fully working parachute simulation that can land. The splines connect with the floor. The soft body canopy comes down and interacts with the floor also, crumples up. It's like cloth. So there you have it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Don't forget to um, subscribe to Digital Meets Facebook page and uh, go to our Twitter at Digital Meet. And um, if you're watching on Vimeo, don't forget to check out the Digital Meet um, website. Um, if you guys have got any comments, that's where I'd like you to put them. That'd be great. And uh, if you've got any ideas for tutorials or something that you'd like me to go over, by all means. Uh, put them in the comments of this video or any other video. All right then. Cheers guys. Bye.